Hello everyone, it's the Sheikah Clan here, and I'm going to be going over an essay I wrote in college. Again, just like I did in my Philosophy and Zelda video, but instead this time I'm going to try and just read my essay and let that be the video. Because recording the Philosophy and Zelda video was hard because my brain was all over the place. So this might be easier. And also it's all nice and written out and pretty. So yeah. Hope you don't mind, but I'm just gonna read it, and I hope you enjoy. I feel like most of us would agree that video games are an enjoyable way to spend our free time. After a busy day of running around work or school, just sitting down and turning on a bit of Mario can help make you feel a lot better. Even with this amazing and fun effect games have, they also offer a lot more. It may not seem like it, but video games are a great way of discussing big questions and or themes. I know books probably come to your mind when it comes to thinking about themes and big questions, however books are just a piece of media. Video games also happen to be a piece of media and they can offer a unique experience when showing off interesting and thought-provoking situations. They allow the viewer to engage with the story, not just watch or read it. Speaking of thought-provoking questions though, there is one that I want to discuss in this video. The big question I have for today is identity, specifically how we define someone's identity. With this big question, we will also be looking at Tetra. She is Princess Zelda from The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and we will also be looking at Princess Zelda from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I believe that Breath of the Wild and The Wind Waker use the characters of Tetra and Princess Zelda to help show that identity is defined by how we ourselves define our identity. Before we touch on that topic though, we should all get on the same page. So I'm going to read through my summaries that I wrote, they just help get us all on the same page, and I assume most of you know what Breath of the Wild and The Wind Waker are, but I'm still gonna read through it just in case you need some type of refresher. So, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a sandbox adventure game. The game follows the amnesiac protagonist Link as he ventures out to stop Ganon and save the fictional land of Hyrule. The game also features memories, which Link unlocks by locating where the memories took place within the vast land. These memories show the player and remind Link of interesting plot points. These memories are where Princess Zelda gets to shine, where we get to see her character struggle, and where we get to see her attempt to access her sacred powers. We also get to see her father scold her for focusing so much on her interest in technology and science. It is an interesting take on the character Zelda, and we will explore this later in this video. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker is an action-adventure game that follows a linear storyline. The protagonist Link has his sister kidnapped by a giant bird monster. He then goes out on a quest with the help of some pirates to save her. As his quest unfolds, he gets himself entangled into a larger adventure. This larger adventure is trying to prevent Ganon from stealing the Triforce, which is the magical story MacGuffin, and possibly destroying the Great Sea. The pirates that assist Link in his journey include the character Tetra. Tetra is revealed to be Princess Zelda towards the middle of the game. This, just like Breath of the Wild, allows for an interesting take on the character Zelda. Just like with Breath of the Wild Zelda, though, we will be discussing Tetra's identity later. What defines your identity? Is it something you shape, or do others play a part? It sounds like a simple question, but the more you think about it, the more complicated it gets. According to assistant professor from the Ohio State University, Susan Jones, and an associate professor from the University of Maryland College Park, Mary Lou McEwen, human identity has a multi-dimensional nature. Pretty much the subject of identity is complicated and has many funky dimensions to it. A dimension of your identity can be defined by others, pretty much how other people throughout your life will give you labels. Your school will label you a student, your job will label you an employee, your grandparents will label you their grandchild, and the list goes on. The government will also define your identity through certain labels, such as your sex and your marital status. Some of these labels are important, however, I believe you can define yourself however you want. You may just find that a certain label doesn't really fit you. Think of it like you are writing a small biography, bio for short, for some social media site. When I do this, I usually mention that I am a computer graphics student, however I act differently with my employment label. When I worked at an ice cream store, I did not include that in my bio, but when I worked at a kennel for animals, I did include it. Why is that? Well, dogs and other animals are more important to me than ice cream. It also could be because according to Rhea Luthian and Jennifer Crocker from the State University of New York at Buffalo, individuals strive to maintain, protect, and enhance a positive self-image. Not to throw myself under the bus here, 
but I also put the kennel job in my bio to make myself look cooler on social media. Who doesn't like a person who works with dogs? So I was trying to enhance my identity. All I am trying to say is, you get to decide what aspects of your identity are important to you. This is what we will be focusing on with Tetra and Zelda, as those two characters struggle with others defining them. So, we are finally getting into the meat of this video. Here we will be looking at the two characters of Tetra and Zelda, while also discussing the subject of identity. We will first look at the characters' identities, then their family struggles, and lastly, how they resolve their struggles. All three of these aspects play a large role in each character's identity and the problems they face. Anyway, let's actually move on to this talking about this now. Their chosen identities. To begin with talking about their identities, we will start with Tetra. When people think of Princess Zelda, I imagine they think of a soft princess who is brave but delicate. This is completely different for Tetra. Tetra has a strong personality, being quite snarky and brash at the start of the game. Right before Link joins her on her pirate ship, Tetra requests that he get a shield to protect himself. Once acquiring a shield, Tetra remarks that, Wow, that's a decrepit old shield. Are you sure you can still use that thing? Or are you going to get splinters and cry? She teases Link, since she does not really wish to help him at this moment. This attitude towards Link softens fast, but it helps show Tetra's personality. Tetra is also brave, and even quite friendly at times. Towards the middle of the game, before Tetra learns of her royal heritage, she fights Ganon as Link lays injured on the ground. She even leaves herself vulnerable to attack as she turns to yell at Link to get up. This shows her brave and friendly nature, since she tries to protect Link. All these traits show how Tetra has her own original identity. She is not bogged down by the royal princess identity. Tetra is a strong and brash pirate captain. Now that we understand Tetra's identity, let's look at Princess Zelda from Breath of the Wild. Just like with Tetra, Breath of the Wild Zelda is not just a delicate princess. She has a huge interest in science and technology. In one of the unlockable memories, Zelda catches a frog and starts to inform Link about the frog. She states that research from the castle shows ingesting one of these can actually augment certain abilities. This shows her extensive knowledge on the different animal species within the land of Hyrule. She also goes out and researches the mysterious shrines, a bunch of forgotten technological buildings. She learns aspects about these shrines on her own, stating while investigating one that it appears that the structure was designed to be exclusively accessed by the sword's chosen one, but designs can always be worked around, at least I hope. All of this shows that Zelda is a scientist, not just a damsel waiting to be saved. Tetra and Princess Zelda from both games share the fact that they go against the norm of the Princess Zelda ideal. They both are brave and courageous, however, they both stand out. Zelda has her snarky and strong pirate identity, while Zelda has her analytical science identity. The traits that they have now help show their true identities and how that these identities are important to them. These are also identities they formed mostly on their own and choose to identify with. They are not forced into these pirate and scientist identities. I'm guessing Tetra kinda is a little bit because her mom was a pirate captain, but like I'm sure if she didn't want to be a pirate, she wouldn't be a pirate. So let's get into the familiar struggles. Just like with the last section, we'll start with Tetra. Unlike most Princess Zelda characters, Tetra is unattached from her royal heritage. We know she has a mother, but it is suggested that she was a pirate as well. We do eventually meet a distant relative of Tetra. He is named Danfis Nohannes Hyrule and was once a great king of Hyrule. He is now only existing as a ghost. Once King Danfis is revealed, Tetra is thrown into her princess identity. Much to her surprise, she learns that she is the last heir of the long-forgotten royal family. King Hyrule states to her that you are the true heir of the royal family of Hyrule, the last link in the bloodline. You are Princess Zelda. Tetra's identity as a pirate is thrown out the metaphorical window, and because of these new familial ties, she must play this role as Zelda to help save the land from Ganon. Her normal brash and somewhat snarky personality shifts. Instead of being the identity that makes her happy, she puts on the identity of a princess and stays behind in the ruins of Hyrule. She feels that she can no longer face the dangers of the journey any longer. Princess Zelda has a similar negative experience with the king in Breath of the Wild. Unlike Tetra though, Zelda is tied heavily to the royal family. She is heavily in the public eye as the princess. This makes the king, who is also Zelda's father, within the game tense. He views that Zelda's identity as a scientist is just a distraction for her, keeping her away from being the princess that Hyrule needs. He scolds her within one of the game's memories and enforces that, As the king, I forbid you to have anything to do with these machines from this moment on and command you to focus on your training. He bans her from studying the ancient technologies and commands her to work on unlocking her sacred royal powers. He strips Zelda of the identity that makes her comfortable and forces an unfitting identity onto her. 
Tetra and Zelda both struggle with their princess identities. Both characters did not choose this identity. Rather, it was forced onto them by the kings of their respective games. They have their own identities, ones that make them comfortable, identities that they chose for themselves. A princess identity helps show that getting a label forced onto you can cause an internal struggle. It just honestly sucks for them. Tetra becomes such a quiet character and Zelda feels that she is a failure. Princess Zelda identity is not something that every royal woman in the family will enjoy. It is important that the Princess Zelda character save Hyrule, but forcing the ideal identity onto the current Zelda only causes problems. Tetra, being left behind after her identity is revealed, gets kidnapped by Ganon. Breath of the Wild Zelda continues to struggle with her powers, now feeling more disappointed in herself. All is not lost, though. Both characters resolve these issues themselves, and we will discuss that in the next section. This is the next section. Both Tetra and Zelda resolve their identity crises in different ways. Both return to their self-picked identities once peace is restored to their lands. At the end of The Wind Waker, Tetra fights alongside Link in the battle against Ganon. Tetra, dressed in a dainty pink dress, shouts at Ganon, exclaiming, What are you laughing at, Ganondorf? You're insane! Her snarky personality is back. All it took was some inner thinking and realizing that Link needs more than just a dainty magic user on his team. Also, once Ganon has been defeated, Tetra returns to the seas on her pirate ship. She gets to be her normal self again and she is happy to go back amongst her pirates. Breath of the Wild Zelda is similar in this situation. Zelda does not get to return to her normal identity till after Ganon is defeated, unlike Tetra who did so during the final battle. Once things calm down after the battle in the true ending of the game, we get to see Zelda and Link traveling throughout Hyrule. Zelda remarks while looking at her tablet that Divine Beast Baruta looks like it stopped working. Let's investigate the situation. This statement and scene help show that Zelda is back to researching the ancient technologies of Hyrule. Zelda is happy and gets to be herself once more. So, Breath of the Wild and the Wind Waker use the characters of Tetra and Princess Zelda to show that identity is defined by how we ourselves define our identity. The two characters of Tetra and Zelda have their own identities. Even after their identities are thrown aside in favor of another, they manage to go back to their old identities and become happy again. They define their own identities even after other characters say otherwise. All of this comes down to an important message. Be yourself. Be the self you want to be, not the self that others wish you to be. You have the power to be what you want, do what is best for you and your identity. Be you. And yeah, that was my essay. My mouth is very dry. Kind of dying a little. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed my essay. And I hope it offered something to you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.